Hi there, this is episode one of Colin's attempt at lacking Dharma talks. So basically, I want to talk about reality and how I see it, and just practice speaking to a camera. So we'll see how this goes. I'll just do 10 minute videos, that's the intention that I'll set. And I'll try to do one every Sunday. So this is the first. I was thinking I could go over material from my learning here at Willow and how it interfaces with effective altruism. Uh, maybe I'll get to that material eventually, but I noticed I have some material written down here. So I'll just riff on that first. Okay. Hmm. Today, I want to talk about the moment when I was the most evil. I've been a little inspired by how others have, have shared basically where they came from in the sense of how different they are. Different today than they were in the past. Usually there's a, some story that involves a dark, evil past version of himself doing something. And it's unthinkable, basically how they could go from that person to who they are today. So here's that story for me. I think the clearest examples come from earlier childhood, when I was a little more foolish. So I'll go to my teenage years for this one. So to build some context, I uh, grew up in Toronto, in the East End, in Canada, and had a very nice life. Had some friends in, in school that I liked hanging around with and doing cool, fun stuff with. And I guess at the time, my definition of cool, fun stuff wasn't like staying at home and playing video games and watching movies. I probably did all those things. I did do all those things, but I did other things as well, like, you know, smoking a bunch of pot and cannabis uh, before it was legal. Hashtag Canada. Well played. I hope. Yeah, so that was one of the things I would do. And... Another thing I would do is uh, climb on top of the roofs of buildings, mainly schools in the area. Really enjoyed doing that. Did it many different times when I was younger. And there was one particular school close to me that had a, a religious worldview. Uh, Catholic school, and I think being raised in a mostly apathetic Protestant or, or even secular household, I uh, began to see myself as distanced from uh, religion, especially as Christian, Catholic worldview. So I developed a subtle sense of hatred <laughs> that uh, grew and grew. Despite my young age, I was a little annoyed. And I just found reasons to be annoyed. I had a narrative that uh, that Catholic schools were more well-funded than the normal public schools, you know, different kinds of public schools, and Catholic schools are still public, but 
let's just say we have like our secular public schools over here and our Catholic schools over here. So uh, I'm not sure how they differentiate these things nowadays. But then I was in the normal sort of secular public school system, or at least it was normal to me at the time. Uh, and I got to see these rare Catholic schools that would bus kids in from from far away. They always would have uh, about five or so different school buses outside of the school. It was a little bigger than uh, the school I, I had gone to when I was in that age group. And I guess it did just have more students uh, in hindsight. But when I was younger, I saw this as a, a symbol of wealth that and these kids get to ride the bus to school, they get to come from far away. I think that was the first thing that sort of set them apart in my mind. And probably that in, in conjunction with some other narratives about how, uh, how these schools might have more uh, donations or other sources of funding that allow them to be uh, more well-resourced. I uh, I think I had just distanced myself from them. I didn't I didn't see anybody going there as as on my team. So here I'll bring it back to the topic of things I did at night when I was younger. So along with just uh, climbing around on school roofs trying to master my climbing skills. One thing I did on this night was uh, set an intention to not just uh, get on top of the school, but to enter into the school, to find a way to break through their security and sort of just walk around there. Like, wouldn't that be thrilling and fun and exhilarating and exciting? So I set an intention to do so earlier in the day when I noticed a lapse in their security, a way their windows worked that I could later exploit, which I did that night. Came back with my uh, screwdriver or whatnot and uh, basically opened up one of their windows. Uh, I did bend it a bit and damage it. I believe it was not repaired just sort of broken, I'm not sure. But either way, let's just say I broke through one of those windows and I gained entrance to this building. And man, was I excited. A little scared, a little thrilled. And being inside this strange building that I had never been in before, seeing all these things, and uh, this sort of subtle like othering and hatred that I had possessed for these uh, religious folks. That led to me seeing their resources as up for the taking. I think uh, as I entered this room, I, this room of the school, I looked around and I looked for uh, basically anything that I wanted. Uh, I thought at the time that I could probably make better use of it than them. I mean, They've got lots of money and resources. Uh, I, I didn't see myself as particularly privileged at the time, though I very much so was. And I ended up taking some resources from this school. I think the specifics were some maybe snacks or something, or some office supplies. That's where it started, at least. But uh, as I walked around the school a little more, I got a little ambitious. I found a duffel bag to sort of put some stuff in. And basically I was just stealing my way around the school. I had, I'd gotten like a duffel bag full of uh, musical instruments, like some bongo drums and some chimes, I think some chimes and perhaps other things like just a, I think a long metal pole used to attach basketball nets or whatnot to the walls of schools. I saw all these things as uh, 
great things to have at the time. So I just sort of went on this uh, theft rampage, almost. And uh, that kept going along for a while. I think uh, after maybe maybe an hour or so at least in this in this school, though time gets very uh, shifted in the mind in these high excitement situations. After about an hour of of that, I uh, I think it was time to make my escape to go back to the room in which I came. And when I did so, I found something very unsettling and surprising. There was a man at the window, and I believe he uh, yelled to me, Come here! Very loudly, startlingly, commandingly, and powerfully. And my instinct at that time led me to basically freeze and to go along with what this person was saying. I think at that point I had been snapped out of one reality and brought into another. Uh, I didn't have the inclination or instinct to run away, apparently. I think I at least froze there for a moment. I might have thought about whether to try to run. But I ended up going over to the window to this man, and he grabbed me, grabbed me by the shirt, and dragged me through the window, sort of injuring my stomach a little bit, just a little abrasion, some bruises, and uh, pushing me down to the ground. I believe he thought I was much older than I was at the time. I was a sort of tall boy, young boy, and... Uh, I was really scared, just terrified in this moment of what was going to happen to me, of how my life might be changed or ruined by this moment. I think I uh, felt deeply uncomfortable in that moment when I was literally pulled from one reality in which I had the power, I was doing what seemed fun and reasonable and useful to do to take resources away from some some people, some organization, some religious organization that I did not identify with, that I even had built up a little hatred for, at least a little. And now I was uh, a criminal being pushed to the ground and arrested and put into a car and brought to jail for the night. All of this, of course, happened in the middle of the night. My parents were completely unaware. I had snuck out, as I had done many times before. And upon doing this, upon getting to the police station, going through the processing, upon the police contacting my parents, and the next day going to court and getting some sort of uh, bail or whatnot. Uh, I was pretty shaken. And I think my parents were pretty shaken by this, by this incident to see what I was sort of capable of, of doing, of, of committing not one, but, but two crimes, a uh, break and enter, as well as a uh, theft around $1,000, probably under $1,000. Canadian. Uh, yeah, that was one of the darker moments that I can imagine where I was in my teenage years. I had at least some grip on what it meant to be a, a person who was, was good, was trying to understand the world and fit in to some degree. But teenagers can be quite rebellious. And this was one of the high points, if not the high point of my rebellion and my evil and how I hated, hated this religious organization, uh, at least enough so, enough of like a, a deep sea thing. Not, I, I wasn't trying to burn the school down or anything, but I had enough of a deep hatred to other them completely, to see them as 
people undeserving of the resources that they had. Uh, people per potentially propagating evil. Uh, I think I had been uh, at least somewhat exposed to atheist uh, media such as Richard Dawkins or whatnot. And, and this had developed in me enough of a, of a hatred, enough of a, also a source of envy almost for the resources that I perceive them having that I committed this act. And uh, because of my young age, I uh, ended up getting nothing on my criminal record. I ended up uh, getting a public servant to uh, defend defend me and uh, plead for uh, EJS, external judicial system. Uh, man, uh, accounting or whatnot, which basically meant that if I did a few uh, sort of acts of service, acts of uh, reconciliation to try to make up for what I did, then I would get no permanent mark on my records. I wouldn't get charged with the crimes. My fingerprints would remove from the, be removed from the system. So I was fortunate. I was very fortunate to escape this uh, this criminal life that I could have uh, been uh, stamped into. I suspect because of my deeply loving parents, uh, I was able to pull out of this situation in general. I uh, grew up to be a person who doesn't spend as much time uh, breaking into uh, schools and Stealing a bunch of stuff. One way or another, I uh, I went through the process. I learned from this experience, and now I've got a bit more distance. It's been quite a few years, and I can look back. I can sort of relax a bit and and talk about this past, call on this younger self, and label this now as a one of the high points of evil in my life, one of the times where I demonstrated a presence of egotism and jealousy and hatred and a lack of love and perspective and compassion. Uh, perhaps in later years my work through the atheist and humanist group at university uh, would uh, would bring me to meet and actually befriend some people who, who identify as a Christian and Catholic one way or another, or both, probably both, <laughs> and of other faiths around the world. And uh, eventually I, I like to think I became a person that uh, could, could see the good in other people's ideologies and religions and beliefs and whatnot as well as see the, the errors of my own otherings of how I put put people in boxes. And still today, I imagine there are many ways in which I put people in boxes. And I feel not a shame that holds me down, but a shame that, that sort of pushes me up, that encourages me to be better, and encourages me to correct and just continue correcting from this evil, evil column that I've identified before and moving through this less evil column that I am now to hopefully a just a person more or less free of evil. Uh, I imagine this might take about a 80 to 100, maybe more years, hopefully less, to be free of these vices, these issues that I've mentioned, that I've labeled it here as evil or bad. And I, uh, I hope not to carry any blame for myself or others about this, these issues. Uh, in the sense that if I, if I could imagine someone else being in my shoes committing such a crime, maybe not being as fortunate as I was to 
escape the stamp of, of criminal, whether younger or older, we all make mistakes. And I hope to continue learning on this path of uh, acknowledging my mistakes and hopefully becoming less wrong in the future when I make decisions, make decisions and act, hopefully to avoid harming others and instead do what I can to avoid harm or to be helpful and compassionate and life preserving. Though that's much easier said than done. Okay, so that's entry number one. I wanted to take my time with this one as I probably will with the other ones, telling these stories, relating these experiences and lessons. So it took a little longer than 10 minutes, that's all right, it took about 21 minutes and counting. Okay, I guess I'll end it off there. I'll see y'all next week.